in Minnesota or in virtual meetings involving Vikings players, Dalvin Cook had been participating. And my understanding is the team and Dalvin Cook's representatives had been trying to work out a second contract. He was not a first round pick. He fell to round two. So he's got one year left on his original four year rookie contract. They were trying and trying and trying and they are trying no more at least not for now because Dalvin Cook is going to pull the plug on the virtual meetings and he plans to hold out until he gets as it was reported by Adam Schefter of ESPN which I think the information came directly from Cook's camp it's not going to come from the Vikings on this Cook's people want a reasonable deal, whatever that is. And we'll be talking about what's reasonable for an elite running back who has only so many years to be an elite running back before he can't be an elite running back anymore, Chris. But the bottom line is he's due to make $1.3 million this year. We've seen Christian McCaffrey get his second contract, and he had two years left under contract with the Carolina Panthers. Cook wants his, and when you consider the value that Cook had to the Vikings offense last year— Now's the time to strike. It's that same mindset that Ezekiel Elliott had a year ago. They need me, so I'm going to withhold services until I get the contract that I want. Yeah, that, that's exactly right. I mean, I mean, if you're the focal point of the offense and you play running back in the NFL and everything that's going on in the offense is really going through you, why would you continue to play for peanuts? That's the real question. And yeah, Dalvin Cook, a guy who's not real big, uh, extremely explosive, but also extremely aggressive and physical for the size in which he is, you know, $1.3 million just ain't going to get it done for a guy in the Minnesota Vikings, as we know, is a playoff football team. Offense is predicated on the run game, Gary Kubiak. So he's got a lot of leverage here. You know, I know they got Madison behind him. He's a good running back, all of that. But Dalvin Cook, without a doubt, is the MVP of that offense and one of the best running backs in football. It, you're right. It's the same old conversation, Mike. And really, I mean, it, it, it should be. It, this is what every good running back in football should do after year three of their contract. And there's a difference between Cook and Christian McCaffrey and Ezekiel Elliott because of the fact that that fifth year option isn't attached to the back end of the deal. And without getting into the weeds here, as a practical matter, it will take less money to get Cook a new money average similar to Elliott's and McCaffrey's because of the fact that there isn't a significant payment due to him for 2021. And I'll leave it at that. We've talked about new money versus value at signing. But as a practical matter for the Vikings, it takes less raw cash to get to the new money average that we see from a Christian McCaffrey at 16 million, Ezekiel Elliott at 15 million, Le'Veon Bell at 13-1. His deal was signed from scratch, but the top two had two years left on their deal, and that calculation of new money average factors in what already was due to be made. For Cook, all he's due to earn is 1.3 million this year. You put this year into a new contract with a four-year extension, it's not as hard to get. It's not as expensive to get to 16 or 15 million a year, if that's what he even wants. It's unclear exactly what he wants. I've heard the number 13 million per year thrown around. Look, he doesn't have that same dual threat dynamic as Christian McCaffrey, but he's still extremely valuable to the Vikings offense. He's missed a lot of games due to injury, but he's still extremely valuable to the Vikings offense. And the Vikings want to build around Dalvin Cook for as long as he can continue to be a high-level performer, Chris. So they're going to have to get this worked out or they're going to have a problem. Yeah, well, and and the good thing is Dalvin Cook doesn't look like he's going down the mold of like, I want to be the highest paid running back in football, which he certainly, you know, could make an argument for. Again, you know, not that he's better than Christian McCaffrey or maybe he would, he could argue that he could get a little less than Christian McCaffrey is really what I should say. I mean, he could do that. I mean, we see that with every other position in football where, hey, the next guy's up. He's pretty good. He's in the top five conversation. He's the richest guy in the sport. Cook doesn't look like he's trying to hold the Vikings feet over the fire to that degree. But yeah, I mean, I think Minnesota with the way their team structured right now, everything about it, you know, some new moving parts on the defensive side of the ball, change their secondary. They're going to have to rely on their offense. This is a big year for their offense. And, you know, no, Dalvin Cook, to your point, Mike, 
He's not Christian McCaffrey, but they still use him in the pass game a whole lot. You know, he was second in receptions last year for that football team, which is still an amazing feat. And he's by far and away the most explosive player on their offense now that Stefan Diggs is gone. So when you take all those things into account, you, you really do. You go, man, he's got some leverage. And if they want to be a good offense and a good football team this year, they need him there in that lineup. And this is the dilemma that any team with a great running back finds itself in at some point. Do you make the big investment in a second contract and then brace yourself for the possibility that you're going to regret it? Or do you groom the next man up? Alexander Madison, a guy they drafted out of Boise State in round three in 2019, is a guy who has shown flashes. He's shown promise. Definitely. He's yet to yeah. really have the opportunity to take off. But, but... What the Vikings could say to Dalvin Cook is, hey, you're under contract for 2020. We'll franchise tag you if we see fit in 2021, and we can always turn the page to Alexander Madison. They don't seem to be inclined to do that, though, Chris. I spoke to Rick Spielman, the Vikings GM, not long after the draft, and the topic of Dalvin Cook came up. And based upon the things Rick Spielman said, it sounds like they want to keep him around, but don't just take my word for it again, as if you ever would. Here's what Rick Spielman had to say in the days after the 2020 draft. You know, we, we believe in playing our, paying our own players. Um, those are the guys that we develop. We know them the best. We know what they are from a work ethic standpoint. We know what type of players they are, but we also know how much they mean out to our community and how involved they are and, and Dalvin checks all those boxes. He's a he's a he's a very good football player, but he's even a better human being. So we take the whole picture in, and like I said, our philosophy and history has been developing. Hopefully, we're drafting well enough, and we have to to give long term extensions to the guys that have come in and helped us win ball games, and then fit everything that we're looking for to build our culture. And one thing they've been very successful at doing, Chris, is getting those guys signed to new contracts. Now, Anthony Harris is playing under the franchise tag. He's a safety who was undrafted. It's been a pleasant surprise for the Vikings, but he said he wants to stay in Minnesota long term. Various other key players signed second contracts. Kirk Cousins is the only guy on either side of the ball who's basically a stranger to the organization, other than like a Riley Reef who was brought in free agency. But a lot of homegrown Vikings players and they reward them, and they usually get it worked out. Anthony Barr was the one who came closest to leaving. Remember, he had that deal with the Jets, and then he decided right. he didn't have a deal with Fell the Jets because who right. in the right mind wants to play for the Jets? I'm just kidding. Uh, but uh, uh, maybe I'm not. But uh, no, I'm kidding. Uh, so, so that's what they want to do. That's what they want to do. But ultimately, it comes down to how much cash is it going to take, Chris? And they're at an impasse. Now, as of a few weeks ago, I think there was some quiet optimism they would get something done. But right now they're at an impasse. And Cook is playing the card that's available to him under the CBA, which is to say the rest of this stuff that we're doing for the balance of the offseason is voluntary. I'm not going to be part of it. And he does have a right under the CBA to withhold services in training camp. We hear all the time, you signed a contract, you signed a contract. And this is the first time we're saying it in 2020, and it may be one of the spaces on PFT bingo, but there are two contracts. The contract between the player and the team and the broader contract between the NFL and the NFL Players Association. Players have rights under both deals. The teams have rights under both deals. And Dalvin Cook has rights under the broader CBA to withhold services, even if he's technically in violation of his individual contract with the Vikings. And remember, for your first contract, you don't get to negotiate anything. It's all slotted. It's based on where you're picked. It's not like it's an arm's length negotiation where you add in incentives and and get more money if you you know if you start a certain number. Of games. No, it's all set in stone, which makes it, I think, even easier for a player to justify a holdout. Yeah, no doubt about that. And, you know, easy to justifiably have a holdout when you're the most explosive guy on the offense and the MVP of the offense and one of the best running backs in football. You know, the, the big question, Mike, I think is really is what is that number? You're right. And then da and then as far as the Minnesota Vikings are concerned, you know, how many years do they want to commit? What kind of guaranteed money do they want to commit? We've seen, of course, the running back market. Hey, Christian McCaffrey, top paid guy. Now the next guy's down. It's not, you know, a good case argument for running backs. When you start to talk about Ezekiel Elliott, Le'Veon Bell, 
so far to me have not lived up. Either one have lived up to what they're making contract wise, 15 million and a little over 13 million. David Johnson, you know, he's there. Derrick Henry gets his running back franchise tag this year. So we'll see. It hasn't been a good experiment for running backs to sit there so far to say, hey, teams, look, I mean, the evidence shows that this is, you know, a good investment. You get a running back, you know, they perform well for a long time. You said it already. So it's dangerous that way. Um, but Dalvin Cook can't play for $1.3 million, especially at that position in running back in the NFL. And, and again, I think this is going to go on with every top level running back after year three of their rookie contract from here on out. And this is what it should ha- what should happen. But, you know, Mike, I ask you, what realistically, what should Dalvin Cook expect? What do you think he should make? I mean, he certainly deserves to be in the Le'Veon Bell conversation where he's at right now with $13.1 million. Well, here's the thing to remember, too. If it's a four-year extension on the one year that's left on his current contract, yeah. making it a five-year commitment, that's the limit of my mathematical ability. But if it's a five-year commitment, the question is, how much of it is a true commitment by the Vikings? Is it two years of fully guaranteed money? Most teams will stop at that when it comes to running backs, two years. Then after that, it becomes a year-to-year proposition. So the question becomes, how much money does a player want up front to justify signing on for the extra years beyond that, doing a five-year commitment when you know that after the first two years, you're at the mercy of the team. They're going to keep you around if you're continuing to get it done. If you're not getting it done, you're gone. That's how it works. And we've seen many running backs who don't get to the end of that second contract, who don't cash every check. Quarterback, for the most part, great quarterback is going to cash every check of every contract with the team until they get to that point late in the career where it's time to move on, as we've seen happen more frequently in recent years. For a running back, you're a year or two into that second contract, and the question begins, does he still have it? Does he still have it? It's that car crash dynamic. How much tread is on the tires? How long can you play at that level? When do you begin to lose half of a step and not have that explosiveness that we've seen from Dalvin Cook in the footage that's been playing throughout the show, Chris? So for me, the question is, how yeah, much does he want up know. front? Miss- does, he want, yeah. does he want $27 okay. million over two years like Le'Veon Bell got? Now, Le'Veon Bell had to go through a year of the franchise tag hold out for an entire season, and then he became a free agent, and he got that $27 million over two years fully guaranteed. Is that what Cook wants? And the other dynamic here, too, is, and we don't know how this is going to play out with the pandemic and the possibility of empty stadiums and the salary cap going down next year, that hovers over these negotiations as well, Chris. When you have a lot committed to your quarterback and other key veteran players on the team, something's got to give. And yeah. can you justify tying up that much cash and cap space over the next two years in in a running back when you've got Alexander Madison there. I mean, they know him better than anyone. They saw him in practice. We saw some of him in games. I mean, He's good. Is it is it crazy to think they could just say, Dalvin, if you want to hold out, hold out, and we'll go with Alexander Madison, Michael Boone, and Amir Abdullah as our depth chart? No, it's not crazy. You know, they could get it done. Again, I, I think this will be the part of the conversation, too. And the NFL as we go forward with good running backs after year three starting to wise up and realize why would I continue to play when I'm, you know, one of the leaders on our offense as far as statistics and, you know, plays made. But, you know, the flip side of that is the teams, I think, are going to have to start going, OK, you know, we talked about this during the draft process. You almost got to be in the draft market for a running back every three to four years They basically go, OK, I'm drafting a running back. Got him for three years, might have to flip it out and get a new one three years from now, whatever it may be. But yeah, well, these type of situations, Mike, embolden teams to start moving on from these running backs because, I'm, I mean, look at the players that are going to be available here after the year. You know, it's again, this is just, it's, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. So it is a list that would make a hardcore fantasy football trees. player. Yeah. I mean, if you're a fantasy football player, you, I think you pee a little bit when you see this list. The turmoil that is coming in 2021 when these contracts expire, unbelievable. Now, a lot of these guys are going to get second contracts, but some of them aren't going to get second contracts, primarily because, number one, there's going to be plenty of free agent running backs next year, and there's always a crop coming out in the draft every season with full tread on the tires. So what do you do, Minnesota Viking fan? What do you do? I want to hear what you want. Like, what do you think the proper play is for your team here? You know, because you're right. Rich Spielman's in a tough spot. 
They've spread some money around because Rick Spielman, he's one of the best draft evaluators there is in the NFL. So he keeps drafting awesome linebackers, awesome defense and awesome wide receivers. And they pay them because, yes, teams want to keep the players they've drafted. They're homegrown, like we heard him say. So this really is a tough one. And I won't lie. I think Ezekiel Elliott last year scarred me a little bit. Uh, as much as I, we all pounded on the table for him to get more money, you know, the way he played and didn't live up to expectations and the yards he left on the field, it's, it scarred me. It scared me a little bit to, to throw running ba- uh, run, big money out to these running backs. Well, I think the message for the Vikings is, and they need to be very candid with Dalvin Cook's agents, we want to get this done now. If the holdout lasts into training camp, we are not going to be inclined to pay you the kind of money you're looking for because this season ends up potentially being wasted for Dalvin Cook if he's not part of the program. It's going to be hard enough to get people ready. If he's staying away from training camp in a year when we're trying to get everybody ready, we got Alexander Madison, and we believe in him. He's grown. He's developed. We used a third-round pick on him for a reason. You know, at the time, they didn't know what Dalvin Cook was going to be. First year in the league, torn ACL non-contact, week four. They got to the NFC Championship game without him. Latavius Murray was their main running back then. 2018, he he, he missed games. He had a, a collection of injuries. He, 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 he wasn't – you know, he has one year. And look, I'm a big Dalvin Cook guy. But let's be are. realistic. He's got one year. Where right. he has performed at a high level. The question is, can he sustain it? And what is that one year worth from the standpoint of his next contract? And that's the challenge for the Vikings. I don't know what they do, but I think whatever they do, they need to make it clear we got to do it now because it's in no one's interest for this to linger into training camp. And a couple no. of quick, a couple of quick CBA points that I want to make, because you're going to hear about this, and I want to tell you what it really means. It ultimately means nothing. One of the things you're going to hear about is, under the new CBA, if a player does not yet have his four years of service toward free agency, and he doesn't show up for training camp, he now automatically loses the year of service, meaning that in 2021, Dalvin Cook would be a restricted free agent, not eligible for the franchise tag, which is a huge financial difference. But we've seen this time and again. The old deadline was you had to show up 30 days before the start of the regular season. Chris Johnson, nine years ago, he didn't care. Last year, Ezekiel Elliott, he didn't care. Remember, everybody in Dallas was saying, he's definitely going to show up by August 6th. He'll be there. He's not going to give up that year for agency. No, no, because here's the thing. You're holding out for the contract. You don't care about free agency. You want your contract. You're going to stay away until you get your contract. So that doesn't mean anything. Now, it means a little bit more for Cook because he's one year away from free agency. Elliott was right. two. Johnson was two. But still, it's not, it's, not that, that as, it's not as destructive to a potential holdout as you would think. Secondly, the fines have gone up to $50,000 per day if you hold out during training camp. But again, guys don't care. You can still waive the fines for guys under their first contracts, not for guys under their second contracts. That's a new twist. But that th- those things twist. won't matter. If he's going to stay away, he's staying away to get paid. He's not coming back until he gets paid. And that's that, Chris. So those other things are just details. He's staying away until he gets his contract. But I think it's in his interest and the team's interest to get this done before it becomes a training camp holdout because when that happens, 2020 potentially is a wasted season. Yeah, well, you're right. It is. And Dalvin Cook doesn't want that. You know, as we've talked about here during the pandemic and everything else, he only got so many years of, you know, athletic explosion to capitalize on that and be an elite NFL running back. So he wants to do that. You know, Minnesota, of course, with Gary Kubiak taking over at offensive coordinator, of course, he wants his offense to look good and everything to, you know, be hitting on all cylinders. Now, I would think, Mike, you know, a little bit like we talked about yesterday, you'd be able to dangle some guaranteed money out in front of a guy like Dalvin Cook, who hasn't made a, a lot of uh, change to this point. You know, I know Zeke Elliott got a little over $28 million guaranteed at signing. Uh, Christian McCaffrey's, what, right at $30 million, something like that. You know, if you could find a way to get an extension with Cook and – maybe 24, 25 million guaranteed, something like that, where then it works out to be, you know, basically a two or three year deal. And then you reassess from there. Uh, I think that could be a win-win from all sides. It doesn't look like Dalvin Cook is trying to kill the Vikings. He looks like he's just trying to get some money in his pocket to protect protect himself because he's already torn an ACL in the NFL. And he does run hard. 
and he realizes this is the best leverage he's going to have as an NFL running back. There is no Stephon Diggs there, and he's clearly the go-to guy in the offense. So, you know, you do it now or you never do it, and I, and I think the timing is right for Cook here. And if he's not there, what does that mean for Kirk Cousins? Because we have seen Cousins thrive when the running game is working. When the running game is not working, Kirk Cousins does not thrive. Puts a lot of eggs in the Alexander Madison basket at a minimum. But can Kirk Cousins get it done if he doesn't have that Dalvin Cook threat? I, 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 that's a big question. And I don't want to sit here and just totally put it all on Kirk Cousins. I question the offense in general. Can, can Gary Kubiak have the type of offense that can spread the ball out and go, oh, we don't have a running back like that. We need to do different things to get the ball to the receivers in space and do all that. So I have lots of questions there. And I think that adds to the leverage with Dalvin Cook, though. You're right. You know, Madison's really good. Don't get me wrong. But again, When you only got one good running back or one proven commodity, I know Boone's there, but I'm not going to put Boone in the special category there quite yet. You know, hey, Madison gets hurt. All of a sudden, you know, you're on to a list of guys where you don't feel good about what you might be able to do in the run game, pass game with your running back. It changes your offense, all of that. So uh, it's certainly risky, too, if you're the Vikings to play the you know, we're going to draw a line in the sand, not sign you, Dalvin Cook, and go with the guys we got. That could certainly hurt this offense in a big way. And if you noticed on the graphic, that's not a misprint. 34.7% of Kirk Cousins' throws came from play action, which is the device aimed at fooling the defense into thinking Dalvin Cook is getting the football or some other running back, typically Dalvin Cook. And, and I would say the other third is bootleg left and the other third is bootleg right. But play action has been such a big piece of what Kirk Cousins has done with this Gary Kubiak offense. And when Dalvin Cook is running well, it makes sense. Freeze the linebackers, have the corners maybe peeking into the backfield a little bit, and it gives your guys a chance to run past them, and it sets up a big play potentially. So if you don't have a threat at running back, all of a sudden that's not as effective, Chris. That's what the Vikings are facing. This is a dilemma for the Vikings And it's a dilemma for Dalvin Cook because I don't think he wants to join that list of guys who played the game and got his money. And then when it was time to literally play the game, he couldn't play like he used to. I think that he's smart enough to recognize from the lessons shown to him by others that there's a chance he plays this in a way where he has a down year. And I don't think he wants to do that. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.